A civil liberties caucus is taking shape on Parliament Hill, spearheaded by conservative MP and former party health critic Marilyn Gladue, with the mission of defending anti-vaxxers who face suspensions and terminations at work. The group is separate from the Conservatives' official opposition caucus, but will reportedly be made up of Conservative MPs and Senators. Will they get party backing and who exactly will they be fighting for? And how about leader Aaron O'Toole? Is this new caucus a direct challenge to him? Let's find out. And joining me now is Conservative MP-elect Marilyn Gladu, a former party leadership candidate and a member of the Civil Liberties Caucus movement. Hi, Ms. Gladu. Thank you for being there. Um, Great to be here. First, I, I, I have to ask you this. Are you vaccinated against COVID-19? And, and is this about you? Uh, no, this is absolutely not about me. Uh, as you may be aware, I haven't disclosed my vaccination status publicly um, because I'm trying to uh, stand on the principle of medical privacy. Um, this is an important thing for many in this country, and we want to make sure that uh, that right is protected. So you feel that the question asking people if they're vaccinated is an infringement on their civil liberties, but you're asked that question if you walk into a restaurant, a cafe, a gym, a hairdresser. So are, are civil liberties being infringed all day long, all the time now? That is a great question for the Civil, civil Liberties Caucus. This is the kind of work that this uh, working group will do. We will bring in you know, legal experts, uh, those that are stakeholders, and, and get the answers to these questions that people are asking. So who is in this caucus? How many of you? Is it only you know, conservative MPs and senators? Well, it's early days yet because we've only had a couple of meetings. Originally, um, when we returned to Ottawa, a bunch of MPs were talking about the issues that we were hearing from constituents. And so we said, well, maybe we should get together and talk about this some more. So there were about 15 that showed up to that meeting. And then uh, subsequently, others heard about it and were interested. So we had another meeting and, and uh, sort of made a list of the things that might be uh, issues that, that we're hearing about from our constituents. And so now we need to determine uh, how we're going to move forward with Parliament not sitting and um, committees maybe not even starting till next year. Normally, we would do this kind of work in committees, but in the absence of that, we need to find a way but, to um, get the answers that Canadians I are understand. looking have for. You, have you discussed this with, with your leader, Mr. O'Toole? Was he invited? Um, does, he know, does he know about this? Have you, have you had conversations? Or is this so, just a so challenge? So he was not part of the original conversation uh, with with the meetings that we had, but I'm sure as soon as he heard all the headlines um, that it, it became uh, important. So we've had a conversation, and certainly um, he understands that this is just another one of the, the working groups. We, we typically have a lot of these uh, as issues come up, and uh, like-minded MPs want to get together and, you know, dig into them, get some data, and bring those back to National Caucus so that we can then take a, mm -hmm. a policy decision. So what, what you're telling me, he, he was fine with this, your, your leader was fine with this. Did he express any desire to join the Civil Liberties Caucus? Well, Aaron O'Toole is very busy fighting uh, on issues like inflation and the destruction of our economy and, uh, you know, being the leader of the party. So, uh, you know, I'm sure he doesn't have time to get involved in every one of the working groups. He's more than welcome to come and uh, hear what we have to say and, and contribute. So you used to be, this is my last question, I know we don't have a lot of time and you're busy, but you used to be the conservative health critic. So would you be okay with unvaccinated, for instance, healthcare workers potentially, you know, taking care of uh, vulnerable patients and children? Well, you know, I really want to say thank you to all the healthcare workers who wore their protective equipment. They wore their N95 masks and their face shields and their gowns and their gloves. And while nobody was vaccinated, they protected their clients from getting COVID-19 by doing that. And so I think we can certainly maybe follow the example of Quebec and provide reasonable accommodation like rapid testing for those that have not taken the vaccine. They're still wearing their PPE. They're still protecting their clients. So you would you think that MPs then, if if you think healthcare workers should continue to work and see patients, then you think MPs should continue to sit in the House of Commons. Those unvaccinated ones should have the right, if I'm understanding what you're saying, to sit in the House yeah, of Commons. Yeah, we believe in reasonable accommodation. I mean, we were actually sitting in the House, many of us, when no one was vaccinated, wearing our masks and being socially distanced. We now have rapid testing that could, you know, ensure that everyone is, is protected and that we're not uh, at risk. So I think all of these kinds of reasonable accommodations should be considered. 
True that, but just just to finish on that thought, you were sitting in the House while the vaccines were not available and also criticizing uh, the government for not having uh, vaccines delivered fast enough. Now you're saying that actually it's okay to sit in the House and not be unvaccinated. They're reasonable accommodations. Am I right? Well, keep in mind, we're talking about a very small number of people. I mean, uh, the majority of parliamentarians are all vaccinated, and Canadians have done a great job with over 84% being vaccinated. Our parties encourage people to get vaccinated, and we will continue to do that. But we want to make sure that, that those who have their reasons for not taking the vaccine have a reasonable accommodation as well. Marilyn Gladu, thank you so much for taking the time. This was an interesting conversation. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. You too.